good question. I think what you're seeing in a lot of categories is a lot of traditional leaders are being challenged and uh, it, it kind of all comes down to value and value proposition and, and the reason Apple's being challenged by Samson, for example, is Samson has a great value proposition and that really is because they have um, a great set of benefits. You know, they have very high quality products, innovative, great design, and you know, somewhat affordable in terms of their, you know, still have a premium, but not necessarily as expensive maybe as some other other brands and I think, uh, as some other competitors. So I think what they've done is, is, I think the lesson for Apple, the lesson for any leader is the importance of having the right value proposition and you can't stand still. You gotta innovate, stay relevant, and make sure you're delivering the value in terms of the right benefits and, and it, you, just can't stop doing that because it's too competitive. When you start discounting a lot, I think what happens is it, you're training your customers to buy on discount. I think you are sort of degrading your brand a little bit. And so I'd, you know, I'd rather see brands try to sustain the premiums by creating the benefits that allow, you know, allow, the, allow them to, allow customers to justify paying the premium price in their minds. And that's the key thing. The key thing is, as a consumer, what you think a brand is worth. And you're willing to pay it because you feel it's worth it. But I think that's where I'd, I'd rather see brands, you know, be careful not to start playing some price discount game that's not going to help them in the long run and not going to create a strong competitive advantage. Focus much more on the benefits. I think the thing to me is it's, it's partly the case, you, you, when you talk about investment, you have to be able, there's the quantity and the quality of the investment. And the quantity is just, do I have money to spend on, on my particular brand in, in this particular time? The quality is, how am I spending it? What am I spending it on? And in what ways am I creating a competitive advantage and creating a stronger position and giving customers superior experiences and delivery? So I think that's the real key to me you know, in, in any time, and especially recessionary times, if you have a good story to tell, you have good products, you have a competitive advantage, it is a great time to invest because others aren't and that allows you to, to gain traction in the, in the marketplace with a strong value proposition. But it's critical that that's the case. So just investing in, in and of itself won't necessarily make a difference. I actually think every company should be talking about social good. I think they should importantly tie it into what they do. And so, and therefore, it, they should have different kinds of products, and they certainly can develop different kinds of programs that go with those products or those services, for that matter. And I think that's the that's really the critical thing. And and social social good is about creating win-win marketing programs. You're building the brand, but you're also helping out a cause, whether it's community, it's social, it's environmental, health, whatever it is, something that people care about. But it's also something that ties into what you do as a company and what your products do. And I think that's critical because it, it, you're not going to sustain it if it's not a win-win, if it doesn't create an advantage. And I do think there, if you can be just as creative creating these programs and making them distinctive and unique and really compelling and tying that in with your product. So I, I actually think, I mean, it's a good question, but I actually think in many ways, um, I think every company should have this and have a purpose that is in, aligned with their, their selling and their marketing. We've tried, you know. So, I mean, it's challenging. It's one of those things where you're always trying to uh, add new courses, update old courses, to try to keep up with all the changes in, in the marketplace. And you know, I think management education has a role to play in trying to provide structure and thought leadership and, and some conceptual foundations and theoretical foundations to practice. Um, but we have to bring those two together, and that's the key. It has to be relevant and it has to truly make an impact. And we've worked hard. This has been as hard as it has been for industry and marketers out in the marketplace over the last probably five, ten years, just as hard for management education because we're working hard to try to also deal with those changes. So it's exciting, but it's also very challenging at the same time.